Hello and welcome back. This could well be some very important information for those of you who have cars equipped with the Peugeot, Citroen, Stellantis 1.2 PureTech as it looks like a permanent fix for the wet belt problems may well be available. Let's start with a little bit of background on the 1.2 PureTech because in order to understand the solution, you need to understand the problem. So introduced in 2012, this was fitted to lots of different cars, Peugeots and Citroëns obviously, but it also found its way into Vauxhalls as well as part of that Stellantis group. This was the engine that was designed to replace the old Peugeot TU unit. Anyone remember them? I owned one of these actually. And bring with it better fuel economy, lower emissions, lower tax bans, lower running costs, but as many of us have found out, one thing that it did not bring with it was more reliability. And one of the major reasons for that was the wet belt design. That's where we've got a timing belt running through the hot engine oil. Now I've made videos on this before, so I won't get right into the technical aspects, but just to give you a rough idea of it, yeah, that belt's running through the oil, it doesn't mix well. A major problem component that we see in Ford 1 liter EcoBoost engines as well. You still get people unbelievably fiercely defending this setup, claiming that if you service it on time and you use the right oil and everything else, it'll be okay. But I have firsthand seen a number of these go wrong, all of which were taken good care of, serviced at main dealers on time and so on. Rubber and oil just should not go together. It's always going to result in the breakdown of the belt and when it does, usually what happens is the particles from the belt will get caught in the oil pickup. This leads to oil starvation. And there you go. That engine's a goner. So as you may already be aware, Stellantis, the group owner, have already replaced this engine in their newer cars with another 1.2. And surprise, surprise, it ditches the wet belt and goes back to a good old-fashioned timing chain. But the old ones remain a problem on the used market. However... This is the good news. It looks like a Norwegian company have come up with a permanent fix in the form of retrofitting a timing chain in place of the belt on these older engines. There's a novel idea. Why don't we think of that one? Jokes aside, this looks absolutely terrific. Here's a photo of a standard PureTech engine with the god-awful wet belt still in place. Yet another one that's been replaced after breaking down. This is it just put in the engine, that's why it looks so fresh, photo was taken right after. And here's a photo of one that they've fitted their replacement chain kit to. It looks as though it removes the wider ribbed sprockets and replaces them with thinner pointed sprockets, obviously capable of running a chain. And if we take a look at the kit photo that they've provided, we can see the chain, that's definitely the long end tensioner there, maybe that's a crank sprocket there. So it does look quite comprehensive and would remove the wet belt in its entirety, and in doing so, remove a massive part of the 1.2 PureTex problems. One good thing about these engines, and there's you won't hear me say that very often, there's not much good to say about them, but one good thing is the belt is situated in quite a traditional place. The wet belt that is, it's just off to the side of the engine, and so reaching it to replace isn't too bad. I believe the going rate at a main dealer now is around about £550, £600 to get a wet belt changed for another wet belt. The reason I mention that is you may well not be an awful lot more to get this kit fitted rather than swapping troublesome belt to troublesome belt. Compared to the Ford EcoBoost Fox engines, that belt really is buried in the engine so it's so much more labour intensive to get in there and do the job. Now I have went ahead and contacted this company for some more information on these kits including costings and when they're likely to be available. So if that is of interest to you, hit the subscribe button and I'll release another video once we get some more information. We all want to get our hands on these. This could be a bit of a game changer for these engines. At the moment many people, dealers, traders, they all avoid them, myself included, but this kit might just allow these cars to be purchased with a little bit more confidence, which would be great as they aren't a bad engine to drive. They're quite fun actually, and they're fitted to some good little cars. It's a bit like the old Mark II Focus STs. They had a problem with the blocks cracking. Someone came up with a block mod kit. It solved the issue, and suddenly people were buying them more and more with more confidence that the engine wasn't going to go wrong and cost them a fortune. Now, the final thing I'd like to say on this topic if you're watching this and you're considering buying one, especially in light of the wet belt situation potentially being rectified, my advice would still be do not do that. This is still the dose of reality here and I want you to get the best advice possible. Whilst this fix is fantastic news for anyone stuck with a problematic engine, 
it doesn't completely resolve that 1.2 of all its issues. What I'm referring to here is the oil consumption problem these engines can be known to have. It's still suggested, unbelievably, that a litre of oil every 4,000 miles is acceptable, which is a it's an obscene amount for any engine, never mind a little three cylinder 1.2. Sometimes this oil usage is just down to a split PCV, which is a really simple, easy to change, cheap part. More often than not though, it's the piston rings which have worn prematurely and the oil has been burnt as part of that combustion cycle. You'll often see it if that's the case, they'll be blowing absolutely tons of smoke because they're burning up that oil. That isn't an issue that's going to go away without that engine being rebuilt. In fact, it's only going to get worse. So my advice would still be, unfortunately, to steer clear of these cars if you are considering buying. Good news, of course, for anyone stuck with one of these engines. But yeah, consider something the likes of a Yaris, a Jazz, a Civic, or something along those lines instead. Yes, you're going to need to pay a bit more up front, but it's going to be a whole lot less hassle for you. And when you do go to buy one of them, here's a service worthy of your consideration. Vehicle Score. Put the plate of the car you're thinking about buying into their system. It'll tell you the good and bad points for completely free. If you are serious about buying it though, use the 15% discount voucher and link in the description below to get some money off your next check. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you for the next video.